Okay, what do we have here? Roborock and the Weiss Robot Vacuum. Okay, there you go. Who will win? Let's find out. Hello guys, Lifehackster here. Today we are going to check out another robot vacuum. Now I'm doing this video because last January I reviewed and checked out Weiss's robot vacuum. And a lot of you have made comments that Weiss's vacuum looks like the Roborox and has requested to see if I can do a comparison video. Funny thing is that I remembered that Roborock actually reached out to me January of 2019. I'm not sure why and how I remembered it, but when I searched my 60,000 emails, I found that they really did. And just for the heck of it, I emailed them back. And they responded, and they were willing to send me the Roborock S6 to check out. Thank you Roborock for sending me a unit to do a review. So we will do a quick unboxing, check out its features, set it up, and do some testing. And at the end, I'll be comparing this with the Weiss Robot Vacuum, which I know this will not be an apples to apples comparison. But you will have an idea what features you are going to get with a full-featured robot vacuum like the Roborock S6 Max-V, comparing it to the much cheaper Weiss robot vacuum, which one of the main differences aside from the price is that the Roborock S6 Max-V also can mop your house, aside from vacuuming. Now just a disclaimer, I'm not a vacuum or robot vacuum reviewer. This Roborock is my second and the Weiss my first experience with a robot vacuum. So this is more of a user experience review. There are a lot of other YouTube reviewers out there if you want more of an in-depth comparison and review of this robot vacuums. So let's start with Roborock's S6 Max-V features. I know they released the S7 now, but this is a premium robot vacuum from Roborock and is priced at $700 at Amazon. It features proprietary reactive AI, which it has two cameras, stereoscopic vision, which it has depth perception. It not only sees the obstacles in its path, but it can estimate their location and size and reroutes around them. It also has infrared imaging like a security camera. It can see in the dark. And I'll show you what the camera sees later on. This feature combined with the LiDAR navigation system, it can vacuum your house fast, efficiently, and thoroughly day or night. The AI part of this vacuum is mostly for obstacle avoidance feature, which the vacuum will identify what the obstacles are so as to avoid them. It can recognize any object as small as 2 inches wide and 1 inch tall, and it can avoid it instead of dragging it along. That will be tested later on. Now because this vacuum has cameras, Roborock certifies it, nothing is duplicated, nothing is stored, and nothing is sent to the cloud. As to the other specs, this vacuum has 2500 Pascal suction and 180 minutes of runtime and max vacuuming area of 2580 square feet. It has multi-level mapping which I know the Weiss vacuum doesn't have. Also aside from vacuuming, this robot vacuum can also mop your house. This is what I like. It has remote control and together with its cameras, you can control it from anywhere and check out stuff around your house like check your doors, pets and kids, and even send a verbal message. Time to open up the box. First, we have the power cord for the charging dock. We have an extra dust bin filter. We have the mop cloth bracket and the mop cloth. And we have the user manual. Connecting to the app guide. And we have the charging dock. We have the moisture proof mat and we have the robot vacuum itself. So we have the two cameras here in the front. We have the LiDAR sensor on top. We have the home, power, and spot clean buttons. On the bottom, we have the side brush, the wheels, and the main brush which can be easily removed by pushing it on the tabs. And you can clean or replace the main brush. Flipping up the top cover, we will see the dust bin area where there is the reset switch and the dustbin where there is already a filter installed. Then we have the cleaning tool, a brush and hair cutting tool. Time to set this up. First, I need to find a place for the charging dock. 1.6 feet clearance on the sides and 5 feet in the front. Install the moisture proof mat, especially if you have wood or laminate flooring. Use the double sided mounting tape that is included for the mat to stay in place. Power on the vacuum and place it in the charging dock. Download, sign up, and log into the Roborock app. And you can also use the Mi Home app. Click the plus sign to add the vacuum. Choose S6 Max V. Press and hold the spot cleaning and dock buttons for 3 seconds until you hear Resetting 
Click Next. Type in your Wi-Fi's password. Go to your Wi-Fi settings and connect to the vacuum's Wi-Fi. Go back to the app and wait until the vacuum is connected. And click Use Now. Now the first thing that we need to do is for the robot vacuum to map out our house. And to do this is to let it run and clean the whole house. After mapping and cleaning the house, I still have 46% battery life left and it cleaned 980 square feet and it took 103 minutes. Which I can tell you right now, the Roborock S6 Max-V is better than the Wise because with the Wise vacuum, the battery ran out and needs to recharge for a few hours and return to finish 995 square feet of the house and for 2. hours total cleaning time. And that doesn't include the 2 hour charging time. Let's check out the settings in the app. But before that, if you find this video and other videos helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. And click the bell notification so also get notified when I upload product reviews like this video, comparison videos, product updates, and long-term reviews. Thank you. On the main app page, you can click on the vacuum you want to check. And it will load up the map and also the last area cleaned. You will see the battery level. One cool thing about this vacuum is the camera icon here where you can control the vacuum via remote and you'll be able to stream the live footage from the vacuum. You can control or drive it using the arrows. Personally, this is the feature I like most. You drive the vacuum all around your house checking if the doors were closed or check out the kids. You can even select an area in the map where you want the robot vacuum to go automatically and you don't even have to manually control it. And these cameras are the ones that the vacuum is using for its obstacle avoidance feature, which we will test later on. By the way, the vacuum will only stream the live footage and it will not make a copy, save, or upload this footage to the cloud. You can also use the messaging feature to call the kids and tell them it is time to go to sleep or time to eat. Pretty neat feature. Back to the vacuum page, you can edit the map and you can add a no-go zones, no map zones, or set invisible walls. You can also edit the rooms where you can merge both rooms together or you can split them and you can customize the name of the room. Wise also added the map editing feature via an update after I reviewed the robot vacuum which I will link that video in the description down below. So now you can divide rooms, rename them and also merge them together just like the Roborox. Back to the Roborock settings, as to the cleaning, after you select the area you want to clean, you can change the suction power of the vacuum from off and or change the water level of the mop. You can also select zone cleaning if you want a customized area or a spot you want the vacuum to clean. Wise Robot Vacuum doesn't have this feature at this time. This is a nice feature to have for spot cleanups. Clicking on the three dots on the upper right corner, you will get to the vacuum settings which I'll just show you, Manage Maps, where you can save multiple maps and there's an option for multi-level mapping. Good if you live in a two or three or more story house. Wise doesn't have this feature. So I let the Roborock S6 Max-V vacuum the whole house except the bedroom areas and it worked pretty well and without needing to recharge and finish the job in only 103 minutes. I cleaned out the dust bin which is the same setup like the Wise's. Roborock has a 480 ml capacity dust bin and Wise's has a 550 ml capacity. So Wise has a bigger dust bin. Next, I tried out the advertised reactive AI avoidance feature, which worked pretty good and avoided the usual clutter in my house like shoes and lunch boxes. And it even avoided a baseball. It is not 100% reliable though and it didn't see my cell phone charger which it dragged it up to the charging dock. It does say in the manual to tidy up loose wires and cable inside your house. But overall, it is pretty good. Then I tested the mopping feature. The vacuum has a small water tank that you put in only water. Roborock advises not to use cleaning products or disinfectants. You can then attach a damp map cloth together with a bracket to the vacuum and it is ready to go. I dropped and smeared some yogurt in the floor. This is an extreme test for this feature and I will not personally use the mopping feature for this. A good old wet paper towel should be a better method, but I just want to see how it cleans. Well, not that good. It smeared the yogurt and also deposited it in the grout. The mopping feature is only good for light mopping and the traditional mop in a bucket and some elbow grease is still the best way in mopping your floors. Now time for the Cheerios and salt test. So the first uh, robot vacuum that we are going to test will be the Weiss uh, robot vacuum and it will be here in a bit 
But uh, the first time that I did this, I inadvertently, well, it dislodged the uh, the brush in the front. Was dislodged when I was doing a whole home cleanup, and while doing the test, uh, the brush wasn't there. So here it is. The wise now it has the brush installed. <laughs> it ran over the Cheerios. There you go. Ooh. It sucked most of it up. Just like the first time. There you go. I can tell you though that the salt, the same thing as my first test before like on the grout line the salt will still be there and because of the brush it actually spread out the salt more to the sides so to the edges here in the baseboard now it's time for the uh, Roborock S6 Max V time for the Cheerio and salt test the Roborock actually has more suction power. It has 2500 uh, Pascal suction. So we'll see how it performs. <laughs> I can tell you that the Roborock left a couple pieces of Cheerios there. I'll check it out here while it's going back. And same thing with the salt. A piece of Cheerio and some salt. Same thing on the uh, crevices of the grout line. Salt. And another piece of Cheerio right there. I know this is not scientific, but because because of the Cheerios, it seems like the Weiss vacuum actually cleaned a better. What's uh, what's your call on this, guys? So comment below what you think. So what do you think, guys? The Weiss robot vacuum does a pretty good job for what it does, and for the price, it is a pretty affordable lidar-based robot vacuum. It does need to recharge to completely vacuum my house, which is not the whole house but just the common living areas, and the bedrooms are not included. If you have different areas and level of floors that you need vacuum, then the Roborock is a good option. But with the price of the Roborock, you can buy at least two Weiss robot vacuums. Roborock's reactive AI feature is not 100% reliable, and it's best to pick up clutter anyways when you know the vacuum is going to run, which is what we do in our household. As to the mopping feature, I would personally not use it. It is limited that you cannot put in Lysol or Fabuloso on it, and Roborock recommends just plain water. It does mop okay for light cleaning. Anything more than that, you need a manual mop. One feature that I like on the Roborock is that you can control it and see what it sees while it's moving around the house. And you don't even have to use the controls. Just pin a point in the map and it will automatically go to that spot. It is borderline creepy though. Any questions, comment down below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.